everyone, and welcome to Honest History, Episode 10. My name is Alexis Russell, and today I will be discussing the great space race between the USSR and the United States. As always, I will be highlighting the aspects of this time period that your typical middle or high school class wouldn't dare to cover. The Great Space Race is defined as the years 1955 to 1975, where both the US and the USSR made great advancements in science, space exploration, and technology. The world had only just settled after the end of World War II, and both the competitors were aided by German missile technology and scientists. The competition began on August 2, 1955, when the Soviet Union responded to the U.S. announcement of their intent to launch artificial satellites. On October 4, 1957, Russia launched Sputnik 1, the first Earth-orbiting satellite in history. And on July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission secured American victory with the first man to walk on the moon. Other major accomplishments were made during this time by both sides, such as the first animal, then person, in space and other various space expeditions. But for the sake of today's discussion, I will be focusing on the United States side of the timeline, such as the creation of NASA by Dwight Eisenhower. With such amazing advancements in science and technology, it's not a crazy statement to say that the U.S. public was greatly affected. The space race was a major benefit to the U.S. by strengthening the economy and giving more equal opportunity to women and minorities. To begin, we will examine the effect of the space race on the U.S. economy. In the quest to beat the USSR in the race to space, the U.S. made many science and technological advancements that provided many new jobs which bettered the U.S. economy. The most notable is the creation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA for short, on July 29, 1958. Of course, space exploration is a costly project. However, the increase in taxes for the general public paid off in the end. Due to the massive amount of work that had to be done to bring a man to the moon within the decade, there was a major increase in the demand for hired engineers, scientists, and technicians. Other jobs outside NASA were created through advancements in communication, medicine, and technology that were made over the years. After the space race, the Earth is now surrounded by a network of satellites, which provide broadband communications and high-definition television, as well as data used for weather reporting and GPS navigation, all which needed people to run them. On the other hand, the world's first portable computer and mouse were created for space exploration and adapted for the commercial markets. This technological advancement created even more jobs, and some could even say created the snowball effect that led to the smartphones we use today. So, while the space race did cost U.S. taxpayers in the beginning, it bettered the economy by the end. The events that occurred during the space race were a major benefit for women seeking equality and for the fight for women's rights. In my research for this episode, I had the pleasure of reading Margot Lee Shelterly's book, Hidden Figures, as well as watching its respective movie of the same title, directed by Theodore Melfi. Both medias follow the stories of the black female mathematicians who worked at NASA during the space race. Hidden Figures highlights the discrimination that women who were working at NASA faced during the time. Despite playing critical roles in America's fight to reach space, women often were given less pay and poorer working conditions than their male co-workers. Even those who worked in important fields were given minor jobs, such as a new hire being made a computerist rather than a researcher or developer. The space race changed that. Over the years, through various minor and major protests, women were able to make a big step in their fight for equality. Prior to the space race, women were still seen as less intelligent and capable than men, still fit for household chores and such. However, afterwards, it wasn't uncommon to see women in positions of importance, such as Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughan, and Mary Jackson. Katherine was the first African-American woman to work as a NASA scientist. Dorothy was the first African-American woman to supervise a group of staff at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics (NACA), and Mary was NASA's first African-American female engineer. But these three women are just three simple examples of women winning their fight for equal rights. Another book that gives great examples of women in this time period is Promise the Moon, the Untold Story of the First Women in the Space Race by Stephanie Nolan. 
As the title suggests, the book sheds light on the unsung heroes of the space race. Although greatly underrepresented, even in today's media, women played a major role in the space race and made great advancements in their fight for equality during this time. The space race was also a major turning point for the ongoing civil rights movement. As I said, the characters portrayed in Hidden Figures were African American women who not only overcame discrimination as a woman, but also racial discrimination. But they are far from the only examples. The Civil Rights Movement was an organized effort by Black Americans to end racial discrimination and gain equal rights under the law. It began in the late 1940s and ended in the late 1960s. The space race fell directly in the middle of that time period. While the various space missions that occurred helped create tens of thousands of jobs, African Americans had limited opportunities to obtain them due to oppression. And the ones they were able to obtain, they were still segregated against. The movie adaptation of Hidden Figures discusses this as well when it shows that racial segregation was still implemented in the use of colored versus white restrooms for its employees. Despite this, however, NASA was a major benefit to the fight for equal rights. Before the Civil Rights Act became law in 1964, NASA took various steps to promote equal employment for all races. An example of this is the creation of a contractors group in Alabama that used its money and influence to make sure African Americans got jobs in the space program. Of course, NASA wasn't the key component for why the civil rights movement was a success, but I think they definitely helped, and NASA wouldn't have existed without the space race. Considering the 50th anniversary of the moon landing this past summer was a pretty big event in the daily news, it's easy to see that the great space race will not be forgotten anytime soon. Obviously, even today, the U.S. has a long way to go until everyone can be completely equal and the nation can have the booming economy everyone dreams about. However, the space race was both a great era of space and technological advancement, and the events that occurred helped create jobs, facilitate equality, and better the nation as a whole. I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this discussion. And to my listeners, remember, if you shoot for the moon, you may just create a better nation in the process. This has been Honest History, and I'll see you in the next episode.